Hey, Joe Gilder here. File this video under the category dry. It's not going to be super exciting. We're not going to hear any music. We're not going to talk about mixing, but we're going to talk about something that everybody who uses Studio One needs to know at least a little bit, which is how to do the I.O. setup in Studio One. I.O. stands for input output. How do we get sounds into Studio One? How do we get those sounds back out? Might seem simple enough, especially if you're using a very small interface with just a couple of inputs and outputs. But as you grow, you may decide you want to start accessing more of those inputs or outputs. Or you may find that the inputs and outputs aren't showing up in Studio One the way you expect them to, and you're a little bit stumped. That's where this video will come in, and I will help you figure that out. So let's take a look at Studio One. Uh, I've chosen to use the uh, an older Personas interface, the Revelator I.O., as my audio interface, just because it has fewer inputs and outputs uh, than my Studio Live Mixer here, just to keep things a little simpler, although the process applies to any of them. So the first question is, where is, how do we find the I.O. setup? The I.O. setup typically looks like a grid, where you have kind of inputs and outputs or inputs and labels. It's, it's, it's something I'm familiar with. I came from Pro Tools. I was familiar with that I.O. setup. It's kind of the same thing here. <laughs> but the first question is, how do we find it? Well, it's saved on a per song basis. So let's open up this song um, here from a recent video. And then let's open up the mixer by pressing F3. And then you'll notice there is a little button here above the wrench. I talk about the wrench all the time. Just above it is this I.O. setup. Also, what does this do? Oh, I didn't know that was there. Audio I.O. setup is what it's called, or you just see the I and the O there. Let's click on that. That pulls up this window here. This is where we're going to spend our time today, uh, making sure we really understand this. By the way, this is kind of, this is all song specific information. So we could enter like the title of the song and all that. Um, if you're looking for specific stuff to a specific song, this is where that lives. But IO setup is the main one here. First thing to note is there are two tabs here there's inputs and outputs. Okay, inputs are how we get audio into the computer via the inputs on the audio interface. So if it has a microphone input, that's an input. Okay, we're sending signal in to the computer. Outputs are how we get audio back out of the computer. So it goes from the computer through the USB cable and then it comes out some of the outputs. The normal outputs you'll see on any audio interface typically are a set of headphone outputs, so a single headphone jack, and typically a quarter inch left and right output as a main output that you would plug into your speakers, for example. Okay, so inputs, outputs. This is what we see here. Now, depending on what device you're using, um, first of all, you want to make sure you have your device selected. So when you first, let's get out of here for one second. When you're first in the start page in Studio One, right down here in this bottom section, it may be a little higher for your, on your screen, you should see what audio interface you are currently using for Studio One. You can click right here to change it. It'll open up this window. And we can say, uh, let's, it may, maybe this is the first time you've ever done it and yours defaults to the built-in MacBook Pro speakers on your computer. That's fine. That may be what it defaults to. That's not what we want. We want our audio interface, which should show up here and have some sort of a name. If it's a Personas interface, you actually see the picture, which is kind of neat. Uh, so we're going to go with the, um, the Revelator I.O. and say, okay. All right, so let's go back to our song and go back to our I.O. setup. Okay, so we have the Revelator I.O. Here's the way this works. Let's, check, let's talk about inputs first. So this is how we're going to get our microphone into Studio One. The, what you see up on the top left is the name of the audio interface. And what's happening here is the computer is looking down the USB cable and it sees that there's a device there. And really, this is an oversimplification, but really all it sees are these things right here. It doesn't see all of this. This is all for our use, but it actually only sees this. So you may open this up and not see any of this stuff. These things may all be gone. And it may just look like this. This is okay. This is fine. This is saying a Revelator I.O. and, and the, the Studio One can see that there are eight channels of audio coming from the device. Okay? Um, if it's a very small device, you might just see two channels. Let's assume this is a regular two-channel interface with two microphone inputs. Okay? In that case, we would literally only see it, mic input one, mic input two. I thought I had one around here, but I don't. So we're using this one. And 
that's all we can see. So currently with this setup, can we access these two inputs in our Studio One session? Well, let's find out. Um, let's say I want to create a new track. We'll call it vocal. I want to sing today. And let's make it blue. That's purple. That's fine. And let's check our input. So this is the input of this channel. This is the output of the channel. The output defaults to the main output. That's fine. But the input, I don't. it says none. It says I don't have any inputs. Why? Let's go check it out. Let's go back to our audio I.O. setup. And we can see while the computer sees inputs on the device, we have to kind of create inputs in Studio One. Uh, this allows us to customize how it works. Now, you saw what I had before. Let's recreate that. Let's create two mono inputs by hitting add mono, add mono. It automatically names them input one, input two, and automatically assigns them to inputs one and two coming from USB. These names here are just given by the manufacturers. A lot of times it'll just say input one, input two, input three. Um, this is a special box that does some special stuff. We don't have to worry about that. Um, but the numbers are here. And we can just basically make a one-to-one -one relationship here. So you may be asking, why, why do this? Why do I need to create these inputs here? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, these names here are hard-coded to that box over there. You can never change them. If you're like me, sometimes you like to change them. Let's say you always have your guitar plugged into input one. You could leave it like this, or you could even call this guitar. And input two, you could call mic or no mic. That means when I go to select my input for my track in Studio One, I can choose guitar or mic as my inputs. Now, let's say that, uh, let's just say we do that. I hit OK. I hit apply, I come back to this channel, I'm not sure why that says click, and look, when I click on the input, it now has two options for me to, to choose, the guitar or the mic, which I set up. It also gives me the names from the interface itself, but if I've renamed them, I can do that here. Let's imagine for a second that you have an eight channel audio interface. Let's pretend this is um, one of the quantum interfaces with eight inputs. And let's go back here and let's just call this Input one, input two. And let's just create some more so we have an input for each of these eight. That's how you would do it that way. Now all eight will show up. But let's say you, you've got the interface with eight inputs, but you only really ever use four. You literally don't have anything to plug into inputs five through eight. Well, you can actually just remove those and just have one through four. This is a way of just decluttering what you see on your screen to make life easier. Um, so for example, I've got a Studio Live. It has the potential for like 64 inputs. I'm never plugging in 64 microphones. I don't ever need more than about 12. And that's just occasionally when I'm tracking drums in here. Um, so this is a way to come in and say, I've got four instruments or four inputs to choose from versus having this be a huge list of every possible input in your system. Studio One is allowing you to customize what you see. The other piece that's nice is I've got a few inputs on my system here that are specific devices. So on my Studio Live, for example, uh, input five, let's say, I've plugged into my Personas ADL 700, which is a channel strip. So I just name it here. It's always plugged into that channel, so might as well name it. So when I want to use that preamp, I don't have to remember, oh, it's plugged into channel five. I can just look and see, oh yeah, there's the ADL 700. And then here's the final piece that's super fun. I have an ADL 600, which, Personas doesn't make them anymore, but it was a stereo preamp. So it has a left and a right channel. Well, let me add a stereo option here, and we'll call this ADL 600. And let's say I had that one plugged into inputs um, seven and eight. Well, I can just come over here and click on a pair of inputs. The first one has to be an odd number, the second one an even number. So one and two, three and four, um, five and six, it can't be th two and three, just so you know. But say, let's say I've got that plugged into inputs seven and eight. Now I can, when I save all of this, this is where it gets really fun. Um, on this channel, since it's a mono channel, it's only gonna show me the possible mono inputs. I can say, I wanna record my ADL 700 on this channel. And if I create a new channel, let's just, uh, let me zoom out. Let's hit T, let's create a stereo. Let's say we're gonna record a stereo acoustic okay 
now I have a stereo channel here. And look, it actually defaulted to the ADL 600 as my stereo input because that's the only stereo input I have created inside of the IO setup. That's super handy. If that's the case, if I only ever record stereo that way, that's super handy. So now my ADL 600 left and right channels are routed to this particular channel. Now, if I go and I say, well, sometimes I record stereo off of channels one and two. Well, let's create another stereo input and we'll call this inputs one dash two. And then we can set it up like this. Now, when I have a stereo channel in studio one, like this one, when I go to choose the inputs, it actually gives me all these all of these options, which is kind of surprising because it really only needs to show me the stereo ones. But I can see here, it tells me that these are mono, which meaning it's going to change this to a mono track if I select those. But now I can see ADL 600 is one option and then ADL or inputs one and two are another option. So I can have two different sets of stereo options for this channel. Okay, I know I've thrown a lot at you, but the idea here is these allow you to customize what you see in the menu when you go to change the input on a particular track in Studio One. That's it. These are what shows up, not these. Although these, the, the names are there, if these aren't created, this over here on the left-hand side, then what's connected to the computer won't matter. It won't, Studio One won't really see it on the channel. It'll just say there's no inputs available, which is really sad. This is all you have to do is create these. Now, typically, Studio One is smart enough to just go ahead and create some for you. As you saw when we first started this video, it had all eight inputs here selected, ready to go. But we can come in and we can remove some. We can change the names of them. We can change which one is connected to which input. And we can make multiple copies of one if you ever wanted to for some reason. Um, but all of that is available to us here with this nifty little grid. Now, this is all having to do with inputs. If we go over to the output tab, it should be a lot simpler. So I've only got two outputs set up, one for main, one for click. And that's really, honestly, main is really the only one you probably need, need, um, unless you're doing some more advanced routing. So all this means is Studio One has lots of inputs per channels, but then for outputs, I really, bare minimum, I just need a pair of outputs to run my main mix. So if we look over at the mix over here on the right hand side here, I can say what my output is for my main mix. It is a stereo output. And right now it doesn't show any, which is curious. Let's come up here and check that out. Outputs. Here's my main going to playback left and right. Is that what's selected here? Yes, that is what's selected here. Um, so that's my main output. But if I wanted to have multiple outputs, for example, a, a different output for my click track, which really only applies to me on a mixer. So let's delete that because that's not super applicable to you. Let's say I want a second output for a headphone mix that's independent from the main mix. I could go add stereo. I could call this headphone mix and I could choose which pair of outputs I want to use. So this particular interface has the option for up to six individual outputs. If it was one of the quantums, it would have eight or more. Um, I can choose that as an output. And now if I do something like set up a bus or set up even a Q-mix inside of Studio One, you can see I just selected Q-mix here, which creates this new little section here above the fader. Now I'm adjusting the levels going to that headphone mix output. So that second output, second pair of outputs, I can plug into a headphone amp and have another musician listening to a different mix based on the levels that I set here, which is super nifty. That's getting more advanced than I wanted to in this video, but I just wanted to show you that this is how you adjust and change what shows up on your input and output selections here inside of Studio One, specifically the inputs. Now we have all of these available, whereas before when I had everything deleted, there was nothing there to choose from. So if you find yourself stuck or wanting to change things up or wanting to customize your input list a little more, that's how you do it. Hope this was helpful. If you have questions, as always, leave comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you.